Hello everyone, my name is Tony and this is the Castle of Farmers, an online platform where we meet as farmers to exchange ideas. Today we are going to talk about feeding dairy animals. In the course of this video, if you feel like asking a question or you feel like you have additional knowledge that can benefit other farmers, feel free to do so in the comment section. To get us started off, let's look at the topics briefly, the topics we are going to talk about. First of all, we are going to discuss about a cow's digestive system and the impact that it has on how we feed the cow. As you know, a cow has four stomachs as opposed to human beings, for example, who have one. So we are going to look at this briefly and we see the impact that does, that has on how we feed the cow. Then secondly, we are going to look at the types of feeds that we feed the cow. As you know, the types of feeds that we feed a cow can be categorized into three. We have roughages, concentrates, and supplements. Roughages is anything like grass, napier grass, for example, maize stalks that you actually cut and give to, to your cattle. Then we have concentrates. These are made using grains. For example, you take grains from maize, then you use sunflower meal, then you use, for example, agricultural limestone, then you for, you add other things, vitamin premix, and you formulate a concentrate. And the reason why it's known as a concentrate is, for example, if you are to give 10 kilograms of grass to a cow, instead of using grass, you can supplement it with 1 kg of dairy meal, and that's why it's known as a concentrate. Then we have supplements, things like common salt that you you feed your your animals, or a vitamin premix or others that you give your animal to to help in fermentation. Things like that are supplements. When we are done with types of feeds, we look at feeding cattle or cows through different age groups. How do you feed a calf? How do you feed a heifer? How do you feed a mature cow? We're going to talk about that then we are also going to talk about the different types of nutrients that must be included in a meal before you you give it to to a cow so let's get started to get at to get to get us started off let's look at a cow's ruminant digestive system as you know a cow has four stomach the first one is known as the rumen then we have the reticulum the omasum and the obamasum you don't have to cram the names you just have to understand the impact that this has on how you you feed the cow the rumen is the largest it is where for example if a cow consumes grass the grass goes there then it's stored for fermentation then as soon as it ferments it comes back to the mouth then the cow chews it then it proceeds to the to the other stomach known as the obamasum when a a calf is born it does not have the rumen that's why it's important to feed a calf with what is known as a calf starter and the important of this is that it goes into the rumen and it start it starts fermenting and the fermenting is what will stimulate a cow to quickly develop the rumen so that it it can be able to start consuming grasses as soon as possible in that way it can grow faster as opposed to a cow that is not exposed to 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 the calf starter next on we have the reticulum where the cow if the cow consumes heavy dense or metals they will eventually drop into the reticulum also known as the honeycomb then we have the omasum that's mostly used for absorbing water and the obomasum which acts as the normal stomach in human beings it has enzymes which break down feed okay next one let's look at roughages roughages refers to stems and grasses that are consumed by livestock and they can be classified into into two we have pastures which are eaten directly by cattle for example if you you get your cow and you take it out to graze what is co it consumes is known as pasture for example naturally occurring grass but the grass is of poor quality if you have you want to have good quality pasture you enter you plant legumes within the grass so that the animal your cow is able to consume both grass and legumes the grass will 
will give it carbohydrates or energy then the legumes will give it proteins for faster growth so if you want to improve the quality of your pasture you have to intercrop then you find you have to find good quality grasses to plant then next you have fodder fodder refers to these are plants that you you first of all you plant them then eventually you cut them and you carry them to where the livestock is as opposed to the pastures which the the cow goes to graze for example if you have grass nini grass in your your field and you take your cow there that's known as pasture but if you plant napier grass or you plant maize then you cut the maize and you go to feed your your cow that's known as fodder we're going to come back to fodder later for, but then we have what is known as silage silage for example mostly we use maize for example if you plant maize then you cut the maize and you use it to you preserve it for a period of time you can preserve it for six months or one year or you can go even up to three years then you use it to to feed your cow we are going to talk in to in details about how you can you can create a silage then we have hay which is grass that you plant then you cut and dry then you preserve it for for feeding your cow so first of all we are going to look at how to to make silage important crops that you can use for making silage include maize sorghum millet and so on for you can make silage using either a pit or a trench or a tower or if you want to do small quantity silage you can use sacks <laughs> the process of making silage first of all you'll need to harvest maize when the seeds are soft you harvest maize when the seeds are at the earliest stage of growth then you'll chop it into small pieces then you'll mix it with common salt to add sodium and chlorine those are minerals then you'll add lime to add calcium then you add a bit of urea which will act as a, a protein then you'll add formic acid next of all you'll dig a pit a large pit then you'll line polythene inside the pit so that once you 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 pour the silage it does not come into contact with the soil then next of all you you will fill the pit as you fill the pit you'll dilute molasses and mix it with the water in the ratio of one is to two you dilute molasses mix it with water in the ratio of one is to two then you'll spray it on top then you'll cover that you you'll compress to get out air then you'll cover the top with with a polythene with a polythene bag then the silage the silage can be ready within a month but you can preserve it for up to six months or there are people if you do good preservation you can preserve it for up to three years without the silage going bad then a few tips to notice when making silage you need to know that the best silage is green greenish brown and it should have a nice smell and no mold if you notice mold in in your silage or you notice foul foul smell you know that you did something wrong and the silage is not good for consumption so if you can find an alternative you you may need to use that next we are going to talk about hay hay is made using grasses and legumes which are cut and dried so the process of making hay first of all you need to cut grass harvest it either manually using a sickle or you can use machines these are tractors and so forth there are special tractors for harvesting grass then you need to heap it you place it into heaps so that it can dry out in the sun then you'll need to turn it from time to time then after three days once you see that it has dried 
it has dried but still retaining the greenish color you will bail it together you will place it there are special wooden boxes that you will use to place it in a bell then you can find a place where there is no water can get to it a good shed where no water can get it then you you will store it there then you can store it for when you are ready to use it the best crops for making hay include rhodes grass bermuda alfalfa which is also known as lucine then if possible try to mix grass and a legume for example rhodes and alfalfa in the ratio of two is to one so that you have hay that has both carbohydrates and, and proteins now that we are done talking about roughages, let's look at concentrates. A concentrate has all the nutrients that has that every every cow requires. It has what is known as a balanced diet. For example, cows require carbohydrates to give them energy, proteins for fast growth, vitamins to boost their immunity so that they don't get diseases easily. Then they'll need minerals for different body functions for example they need calcium to develop milk or to to use in bone formation and things like that then they need plenty of water so for if you find you find a concentrate it has all these nutrients as opposed for example to feeding them napier grass which does not have everything but the reason why a farmer needs to feed to feed a feed that is made up mainly of roughages is because concentrates are very expensive so you feed with roughages for example grass or napier grass or rhodes grass then you supplement with concentrates that has all all the nutrients and two of the mostly used concentrates are calf starter which is what you feed to your calves from day four we are going to look at that then we have another one known as the dairy meal which you feed to your cows that are producing milk to stimulate a lot of milk production okay so let's look at some of the ingredients that you use to make to make your your concentrates you may use maize meal wheat pollard wheat bran rice bran all that i've mentioned above have plenty of carbohydrates within them then if you want proteins you want to add a protein content you can have cotton seed cake sunflower meal soya meal or any other proteins then you can add a premix this contains all the needed vitamins that a cow requires then you can add agricultural lime or agricultural limestone and bone meal these have a rich in calcium so you can use any of the ingredients i mentioned above to formulate your concentrate which you will use alongside your roughages to feed your cow next you are going to look at supplements as i mentioned we have roughages such as napier grass and grasses we have concentrates the one we make using these ingredients then lastly we have supplements which include things like common salt that you are going to feed your cow so let's talk about supplements supplements include things like common salt which is if, which is what you feed to your cow it contains sodium and chlorine which are important minerals that your cow needs but it also stimulates the cow to drink a lot of water that is needed to produce a lot of milk then we have things like probiotics which will increase the amount of bacteria inside the stomach of your cow so that it can be able to ferment grass faster then we have others like iono ionophores which help to reduce coccidiosis next up let's look at hydroponics hydroponics is a system of feeding your cows whereby you 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 keep grains instead of for example developing a silage you keep grains that you can use during the dry season so during the dry season you soak your grains then you allow them to germinate for for seven days you uh, you soak the grains in water 
then you continuously add water you continuously sprinkle them with water for seven days then they germinate then you will take that and you feed it to your cattle it's an alternative method instead of feeding your cows with hay or silage during the dry season next next let's look at feeding a cow through different age groups first of all we start with feeding a calf an animal is considered a calf from birth to the sixth month so how do you feed a calf so feeding a calf within two hours of a calf being born allow it to consume to suck colostrum from from the udder of the cow allow it to suck the milk the special milk from from the cow that's known as colostrum and the importance of this is colostrum has the needed nutrients that your calf needs so the calf will consume colostrum for the first three days two liters in the morning two liters in the afternoon and two liters in the evening so allow it to consume colostrum and always give it plenty of water that's for the first three days after the first three days the cow will start producing milk so switch it to you can either give it milk or milk replacer if you want to give it milk give it two liters in the morning two liters in the afternoon two liters in the evening or you can use milk replacer this is a special powder that contains all the nutrients similar to those found in, in milk then in addition to milk to milk or a milk replacer you'll also need to feed your calf with what is known as a calf starter this is a special concentrate that the intention is to make sure that your calf is receiving food or nutrients from the milk but you're feeding it with a calf starter that will go into the stomach and ferment this will stimulate the cow to develop the rumen which i mentioned earlier which is a special stomach that allows your cow to start consuming grass as soon as grass or napier grass as soon as as possible so ensure you feed it with with a calf starter then water should always be available and ensure that it is always clean once your cow for example if your cow is born your a calf is born with 50 kgs once it attains two thirds of that of that kgs it was born with for example if it was born with 50 once it adds an additional 33 kgs you need to win it you don't win according to age but according to weight gain for example if your calf was born with 100 kgs you need to wait until it adds an additional 67 kgs before you win it and by winning you'll stop giving it milk and switch to giving it strictly calf starter then you'll feed it most most cows for example will will win after one month or two months then you'll switch completely to a calf starter then you'll you'll continuously feed it with calf starter up to when it's six months from six months it stops being called a, a calf and starts be, being called a heifer so next up let's look at how to feed a heifer a heifer needs to be fed with a high forage diet that's you start introducing it to grass grass napier grass maize stalks for example sweet potato vines and so forth so you need to feed it with a diet that consists mainly of forages then you need the animal needs to consume two percent of its body weight for example if your animal weighs 100 kgs it needs to consume two kgs net weight per per day so make sure the animal consumes two kgs of 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 its body weight last but not least let's look at how you feed a fully mature grown cow as you know cows produce milk which is rich in in calcium so a cow that is producing milk needs to be fed with a lot of calcium then at the same time the milk has a lot of proteins so you need to provide your cow with with a lot of proteins proteins can be found in plants such as soy meal sunflower cake 
Brachiaria, Lucerne, also known as alfalfa, and so forth. But you need to be careful to not overfeed your proteins. An animal does not have a mechanism of storing proteins. So feed it with a diet that contains about 15% proteins. Then you'll need to feed it with, you give it a lot, a highly, a lot of forages, but you supplement with dairy meal that has every nutrient that your cows need. And by so doing, you'll be able to get a lot of milk. But in addition to what you feed it, it's very important with in how you house your cow. For example, your cow needs to, to consume. For example, you are giving it the needed amount of feed, but it also needs a place to lie, to lie down. Because, for example, if your cow consumes grass, the grass will go in, into the stomach known as the rumen. There, it will ferment. Then, once the cow lies down, the, the, the grass will come back into the mouth. The cow will chew it before it takes it to, into the abomasum. So, you need to provide a place where the cow can sit down and chew cud so that you have the cow is cons is processing or utilizing everything that it consumes i think that's all i have to say if you have anything that you need clarification feel free to add that in the comment section and i'll be glad to reply thank you